As you know, the pointy dogs are a very big passion of mine. I remember that first time that I saw a pointy dog point. I mean, that, that's a really special thing, and I'll never forget that dog from going 100 miles an hour to becoming a statue just instantly. And it's really something neat, you know, to kind of step back and appreciate. But as we talk about the e-collar, you know, I, I've never trained the other pointy dogs without an e-collar. But I have to imagine that, that it was a really innovative tool that made training so much easier. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's really invaluable. I mean, I, I personally don't understand how you can train a dog without an e-collar. But it has to be used in the right manner. It has to be used as a reinforcing tool and not a training tool. I, I hate it when I hear somebody say, I bought this e-collar to train my dog. It's not what we developed them for. It's not what they're meant for. It's not how they're to be used. It was meant as a reinforcing of what that dog has already learned. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a great peace of mind for me when I'm either training or whether I'm hunting with my dogs. Too many amateurs want to finish their dog today. They want to start training in the morning and be totally finished in the afternoon. It's not happen. that simple, no. Beginning phase, I think there's basically just two commands you need to teach a young dog. That's the dog's name mm -hmm. and kennel. Mm -hmm. The next step to me is the most important step that we do in training, and that's when we move to the intermediate phase, and that's when we teach woe. Right. That's the number one command that I think a dog has to understand. No question. It, and this is where, yeah, in this intermediate phase, this is where we really start using the e-collar, right? We, we are teaching the dog what the collar is, what it properly means, yeah, how to turn that simulation off. And as we go through that, everything is still started on the lead or on the check cord. Oh. So we have a dog that is understanding that woe means to stop, right? At that point, it's important for us to start to replace our lead with the e-collar so that we can have that control at a distance. I think one of the most important things that, that is uh, oftentimes skipped over is oh. using that e-collar in conjunction with that lead to ensure that dog's success as they're going through and understanding what that e-collar means. This is really going to be the first oh. time you've activated the collar and the dog is going to get used to the collar. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you do is, what, the way I like to work with dogs is, on the leash, if I say whoa and I start to move around the dog a little bit, if he takes a slightest little step, then I hit him with very low intensity. Right. And, uh, and it's important to still have him on the leash at this point so that you can have control of him correct, on that leash. That's correct, because I, I want to make sure if he doesn't understand the collar, that I at least can control him with a lead. Right. So we're, we're using the collar and, you know, again, having the leash so that I can reinforce if, you know, if he moves. Uh, I think from here, you want, the, the biggest thing is having the repetition. You gotta have the repetition so that the dog has a chance to not only comprehend what it is you're teaching them, but to, ha to be able to retain the information that you are teaching them. And it takes you know, days, weeks, months you know, to really get this down. And then you wanna get to the point that you are really, you still have the leash for, you know, for a safety or for you know, if you need to, but you really find that you don't use it at, at a certain point because the dog fully understands the collar. And that's when the point that you can take that leash off and now you can go completely off leash with just using your remote trainer. That's correct. And this is maybe a time you wanna think of, of introducing some distraction mm -hmm. at this stage. Just not a lot, but just a little distraction, again, because it's a built part of the building process till we get to this finished dog. If you want what we call a finished dog, then that's a dog that's steady to wing and shot. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, most hunting people, that as long as that dog will hold point till they get up within range, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Some people want a dog that's steady to wing. In case somebody isn't familiar with that, uh, that would be the dog, you know, obviously finds the bird is on point, allows you and your hunting partners to walk up, bird gets up, still stands, you shoot that bird, the ball, the bird falls, still stands, and it just is kind of that ultimate control piece. And there's a lot of safety that goes into that too. You know, when I was, had a guiding business in Arizona, when I was guiding on wild birds, I used steady to wing and shot dogs. And you're right, one of them was for safety reason. Another, I was trying to show people what is possible to do with a well-trained dog and what it, to, to, to have that well-trained dog. 
Um, I think most people, if they, they, th they associate wing and shot to field trial dogs. Mm. That's not true. There's a lot of hunters that I know that like their dogs finished. That's right. And uh, so they spend that extra time and that extra expense to get the dog to that level. That's right. Um, that is a truly finished dog. So how would you go about kind of finishing up you know, that study to wing and shot? Well, I mean, there's, there's really two phases. There's a training phase of finishing it, and there's a hunting phase of finishing Agreed. it. Agreed. In the training phase, a dog has gone through all of those stages that we talked about earlier. Now I'm, he's totally dependent on the, the collar. Mm -hmm. There's no lead, there's no voice commands, because I don't think you should be yelling and screaming at a dog when you're working them. And let's not forget one of the biggest you know, pieces of this is that birds make a bird dog, right? Yeah. They have to have the bird There's contacts. no substitute for birds. And in my estimation, there's no substitution for wild birds. I agree. Now I know everybody across the country doesn't have that opportunity, but a finished dog on wild birds is a, is a pleasure to hunt over, it's a pleasure to watch, and uh, most people see that and they go, that's not possible to do, but it is possible. It's possible for the average trainer with a, once he understands the use of an e-collar to get his dog to that level. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I think is so important with that study to wing and shot is just, just those two initial, I'd say very high distraction moments where uh, the flush in particular, because you know, let's be honest, there's nothing more that that dog that's staying in there on point wants than that bird. And to see that bird erupt out of the grass, that's very tempting for that dog to go take chase. And then the other, the, the other piece would be the shot. You know, that loud noise, that, that loud shot, that's usually that point that if the wheels are gonna come off, right, that's the initial kind of push over, over the edge. Uh, so now we have the flush, the dog stands, watches the bird fly, but now the shot is usually the next temptation. Correct. So now the shot goes off and the dog wants to break. So I know, you know a lot of times what I'll do is the same kind of a thing. We, we've used the, the stimulation, the, you know, the continuous stimulation to correct that dog, avoid the temptation, kind of back them off the temptation of you know, wanting to chase that bird, right? Now we're gonna do the same thing with the shot. So the shot goes off and I'm gonna make sure that that dog does not move. If he does move, I'll make that correction, bring him back to where he's supposed to be and we'll do it again. So that, that dog understands that no matter what's going on, there could be you know, a whole covey of quail getting up, there could be three or four shots going off, but my job is to stay under control and to watch these birds. And you'll find that if you take it slow and build that foundation that you'll be happier and definitely your dog will be happier and you'll have a finished product that you're proud to take it to the field. And that's what I hope we can relay to people, what, what the collar can do to get you to that stage right. uh, with your dog.